Welcome everyone to beautiful Westlake, Ohio for the 54th annual Great Lakes Emmys Awards here at the LA Center, powered by Kent State Students of Journalism and Media. I'm joined here by my fellow students, but we also want to give a special shout out to Classic Teleproductions in Twinsburg for being a great help to us. My name is Josh Ponte. I'm a journalism major at Kent State University and I'm a junior, but I'm going to let my other hosts introduce you guys. Hey y'all, my name is Della Fowler. I am one of the many out-of-staters here at Kent State. I'm originally from a small town outside of Houston, Texas, and I am beyond happy to be here pursuing a degree in journalism with a minor in media advocacy. And it's just, it's wonderful to be out here in Westlake. Hello, my name is Clemence Pasteur, and tonight I will be representing many of the international students at Kent State University. I'm French, but I'm from Portugal, Lisbon, uh, at the University Católica Portuguesa, and it's one of the many partnerships of Kent. Hello, I'm Stephanie Boyer, and I'm a junior studying digital media production at Kent State University. And don't turn that dial and do not go anywhere because we have lots more coverage coming up covering what was on the show, what's happening. And first, we're going to go and see our red carpet interviews from earlier in the night. What a fun bunch to talk to. Thanks so much. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the red carpet here at the Great Lakes Emmys. I'm Josh Aponte. I'm joined here by two very special guests. I'm going to let you guys introduce yourselves for you. I'm Tabitha Starcher. I'm Head of Business Development for the National Academy. And I'm Bob Hammer. I'm the Executive Director of the Central Great Lakes Chapter. Perfect. Are you guys excited for tonight? Absolutely. I've been looking forward to it. <laughs> yes, this is my 46th show in this chapter, and I, and I never can get over how exciting it is. What a night. You see all these people, these wonderful works that they do, and to award the excellence in television. That's what we're really here for. 46 straight for you. Well, yes, I, but I, I started real young. <laughs> <laughs> so what is probably the most different thing about this year than the past ones that you've done? Well, we're back in Cleveland this year. You know, we go to Indianapolis quite frequently for the shows. And after the pandemic, it's just nice to get everybody back together again. That's what we really enjoy seeing, that that part of it is just the, the camaraderie within the television community is just, is just fabulous, just fabulous. Perfect. And have you been here as many times as Mr. Hammer has? No, no, no. I, I cannot even compete with 46. However, um, in the past, um, with my uh, tenure of coming here, it has been nothing short of incredible. So I'm really looking forward to tonight. That's awesome. Now, am I going to see you guys later on the dance floor, you know, throwing down some moves and everything? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. We'll do that. I've got my John Travolta moves planned. Oh, there you go. A little bit of grease. A little bit of, oh, there you go. Okay, okay. <laughs> see, I'm excited for the video games. I don't know about you. I'm going to go play some of the retro video games. Have you been back there yet? I haven't. Oh. Not yet. Not yet. No. Those are, the, those are the games I played when I was a young adult. Oh. <laughs> See, I bought one of the uh, the retro NES systems when those went on sale a couple months back. I bought one of those, and those are fantastic, I will yeah, say, some of the retro games. Out now. I definitely yeah. have to go check those out. Definitely. Perfect. Well, I'll let you guys go. Thank you so much for being able to interview with me. Thank you so much. We'll send it back to you guys. What's going on, guys? I'm Josh Aponte once again. I'm joined by some very special guests. I'm going to let you guys introduce yourselves. My name is Jamil Mills. I'm Dylan Bow. And I'm Trevor Vineyard. Perfect. And what are you guys here for? Are you guys up for some awards tonight? Yes, sir. Ready to get some awards. Perfect. What are you up for? Um, I'm up for my short film. It's called Ten. I think it's the, um, uh, what is it called? Fiction, fiction category, whatever it is. And then also the um, short film called Zeros. Nice, nice. What, is, uh, what are those about for him? If you can uh, tease it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So 10 is about basically a guy whose friend got murdered by a serial killer and turn, he turns into a bounty hunter basically and hunts the guy down. Turns out that the lawyer that he got to help him with the case was the serial killer. So he kind of set him up and pinned the murder on him. Uh, if that makes sense. Wow, that sounds, that sounds pretty cool. I do love murder mysteries and everything, so that sounds awesome. Perfect. And what about you? Uh, most of the same stuff. We're from the same school. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Where do you guys go? Uh, University of Akron. Oh, Akron. Okay. You're right down the road from us. I'm from Kent State. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. We got some, we got oh. some. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. I, yeah. What can I say? Hey, all fun and games, all fun and games. <laughs> and uh, do you guys, did you guys submit uh, short films as well? Yes. Yeah. So I, I think, did you talk about Zeros a little bit? I didn't talk about it. Okay, so we, me and him, we were on a like little group uh, with After Hours, and we did a short film called Zeros. It's kind of like a you know little, little joke, jokingly on like superhero movies and all that. And yeah, that's we I think it was like 40 minute short film. We did pretty good. I I liked it. Perfect. Awesome. Well, good luck, you guys. Nice meeting you guys. No problem. We'll send it back to you guys over there. Welcome back, guys. I have a very special guest. Can you introduce yourself for us? Yeah, Jeremy. Jeremy, perfect. Are you up for any awards tonight? Yeah, uh, sports one-time special. Perfect, awesome. Did you have to submit like a, a package or something? Yeah, we have uh, two shows uh, with the Cleveland Cavaliers, uh, The Road Back it's called, mm -hmm. and then also one with uh, Cleveland Monsters called Monsters OT. Now, which one would you prefer, basketball or hockey? Which one's your sport? Uh, I mean, you got to go with basketball here because it's pro. Yeah. See, I played since I was in kindergarten. I stopped after high school, but basketball, got to agree, basketball is my sport. Cool, very cool. Perfect, awesome. And what was your favorite part about producing those shows for you? Um, I think, obviously, that you would say the people. You know, that you work with a lot of great people mm -hmm. and uh, you learn new things almost every day just based on uh, what they bring to the table and their talent. Perfect, awesome. Thank you so much. We'll send it back to you guys. Hello, guys. I'm joined here by Rod. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, could you introduce yourself for us and what do you do? And uh, are you up for an award tonight? I am not up for an award. I'm the father of someone who's up for an award. His name is Jake, Jake Huber. Perfect. Yeah, and what is he up for? Technical achievement. He's up for four of them. Uh, wow. I forget what they are, to be honest with you. <laughs> Well, that's awesome here to support your son. That's fantastic. You excited for tonight? Very, very excited. Very, very. Yeah. Why well, see you guys on the dance floor over by the video games later on? Uh, depends on how many more drinks I have. <laughs> Perfect. Nice meeting you, Mr. Rod. Right, no you. problem. Yeah. Right. Okay. Hello, everyone. We are here with Tino Bovenzi from Fox 8. How are you, Tino? I'm doing great. It's a beautiful evening. Thank you. How are yes, you? Yes, it is. Oh, thank you. Well, very well. <laughs> Tony, what brought you here today? Uh, I am nominated for a uh, for an Emmy here, a Great Lakes Emmy. It's my first nomination. Okay. Um, I'm excited about it, and there's a lot of beautiful people here, a lot of uh, excited people, and I'm one of them. Um, what is your favorite part about your job? I think it's just uh, the unpredictability in a way, and the challenge of turning something into nothing. Uh, or nothing into something. Sorry, I, I said that backwards. But uh, it's it, you know you never know what your assignment's going to be some days, and then you just got to turn it into something special. And I think that you know this story obviously was a little bit different because I did know what it was going to be, um, uh, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that once uh, you ask me. I guess. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. So. Uh, I, I guess I'll keep going. Uh, I, the, the story I'm nominated uh, for is, uh, I, I nicknamed it Max Stack's Big Break. Um, it's about a 12-year-old guitar prodigy who lives uh, in this area. He lives in Rocky River. Um, his name is Max Stackelich. He's uh, awesome. Um, this young man plays the guitar like Jimi Hendrix, and uh, he's only 12. So um, he was practicing, and he got uh, the chance to play at a Browns game here, a Cleveland Browns game. So uh, he gets to play Thunderstruck by ACDC, and uh, he prepared, and he practiced, and he practiced, and he practiced, and I captured that. And then um, we captured him playing at the Browns game and him having obviously a great performance, and the whole stadium erupted, um, giving him great applause. and, and from there on, I think now he's got like 100,000 followers on Facebook, and he's well on his way. Mm, power of communication and talent. That's right. That's the power it of really our, spreads uh, through media. Yeah, that's the power yeah. of our platform, right? You know, you share that story, and then you never know you're going to see somebody, you know, uh, in the national media or something like that, or your next big guitarist, your next John Mayer. You know, you never know. So mm -hmm. really there's cool. talent everywhere. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, Ben. Thank you so much to know for. Answering your questions. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great evening. Yes. Okay. 
Miss Bailey, can you tell me your name and what you're here for? Yeah, my name's Bailey Burmaster, and I'm a sports anchor at CBS 19 in Cleveland. Um, and I was nominated for two Emmys tonight, one for talent as a sports reporter for my coverage on Deshaun Watson this past season. And then the other is a draft special that is up for an Emmy on a, a show, an hour-long draft special that I produced, edit, and anchored. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. I'm a sports anchor myself. So me and Miss Bailey are besties. She's also from Texas like me. And Miss Bailey, is this your first Emmy nomination? So this is my first time applying for Emmys and these are my first two Emmy nominations. Wow, that's incredible. Now, okay, if you win it, where are you gonna put it? I have no idea. I'm actually in the process of moving in three weeks, so I'll have to find a new place for it in my apartment, I guess. Okay, if, are you moving? Are you sticking around in Cleveland, though? Like, I can still watch your show? Uh, you have about two weeks to watch me in Cleveland, and then I'm headed to Atlanta, actually. I just accepted a job there. Oh, we will miss Miss Bailey so much. Thank you for talking Thank to me. You, You're course. gorgeous. Oh, you. Have nice a good night. You. Good luck. Thank you. Hello, we are here with Colin Delahan from Indianapolis. Hi, how are you, Colin? I'm great. Thank you for asking. I'm excited to be here. Yes, me too. <laughs> Colin, what brought you here today? Uh, my agency in Indianapolis Sports Shop was nominated for four Emmy Awards, and we're very excited to see if we've been recognized. Okay. And is there anyone you would actually also like to see win an award tonight? Yes, I would love to see my coworker Tulani Smith, who uh, is up for a musical composition on a commercial we did for the Indianapolis Zoo. I would love it if he won. Oh, that's very sweet of you. Um, what is your favorite part about your job? I'm a writer, so I get to I get to make up things and see them come to life. What's mm -hmm. better than that? Story, okay. <laughs> All right, thank you, Colin, for answering our questions, and have a great, great evening. Thank and you. I hope you win. Thanks. <laughs> thank you. Can you please say your name and what you do once again for me? Yeah, Jim Nelson, Channel 19 in Cleveland. I'm a reporter and anchor. Beautiful. What do you report and anchor on? Everything under the sun, uh, whatever comes our way, that's, that's the nature of the business. So a general assignment reporter would be the best way to describe it. Now, are you up for an award tonight or are you here to spectate? Uh, well, I'm here for the company. No, I, I'm up for two awards tonight, uh, but at the end of the night, it's all about just being with people who do the same thing, having a good time. And why do you think events like this are important? Well, I think it's important to recognize good journalism, and so often this industry and the journalism profession are thrown under the bus. So to, to recognize the good work of, that people are doing day in and day out, I think it's critical uh, that there's recognition for that. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's all about serving the public. And on that note, what's your favorite part of being a journalist? meeting different people. Uh, um, every day is different. You get the opportunity to get into the community that we live in and to meet the people that we share neighborhoods with and we share the same concerns and to be able to tell their stories is just an incredible honor. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Mr. Jim Nelson. Have a wonderful Thank rest you. of your night. I appreciate that. Bye guys. We'll send it back to you. Hello everyone, we're here with Mike Lucas from um, Cleveland Channel 3. How are you doing, Lucas? I'm excited. First Emmy nomination, so hopefully we could uh, go away with a trophy tonight. Yes. Lucas, what are you nominated for today? Uh, best producer of a live sportscast. Best producer. And, well, if you were to win this Emmy, how would that impact your life? It'd be a dream come true. I mean, when you start in the industry, there are certain goals that you hope to achieve, and winning an Emmy is something that, you know, I think everyone that wants to get into TV hopes to one day win, so I haven't won one yet. It's my yeah. first nomination, and, you know, I'll definitely take the trophy, a little bragging rights over my friends, and hopefully a raise in the future, because that means I must know something, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> Would you think that it's more of a personal fulfillment then, or more a career fulfillment? Uh, both, both. I mean, it's a personal goal. You, it's something to prove all the hard work and dedication and sacrifices you've made over the last three, four, five years have paid off and other people are recognizing it. Not just the people in the building, but 
you know, when you have to stack your resume up against other people in a very competitive business, it definitely doesn't hurt to have uh, an accolade like this on the resume. So I think it's a it would be a big deal both professionally and personally. Lucas, have you always been in this career field? Yeah, I'm actually going on year seven now. I know I look like a baby, but I, I turned 30 a couple months ago. I've been a producer for three years, a reporter for three years, and I'm back to producing. So it's been a lot of fun, and I can't imagine doing anything else but working in TV. Okay. Then we're wishing you the best. Thank, thank you thank so you. much for answering our questions tonight, and thank have you. a great night. And good luck to you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, guys. Okay, I just got the all clear. Can you please tell me your name once again and name, what you're here for? My name is Charles Welch. Um, I'm a presenter tonight and I'm up for, my show is up for two Emmys tonight. Wow, that's yeah. incredible. And you were just telling me a little earlier about this jinx that you were worried about. Do you think you could tell me that again? So last year was our first year being nominated and I didn't come. I stayed home and watched online. I just sat at home and we won. So this year I decided to come and I hope I didn't jinx it by showing up. <laughs> and you are looking wonderful Thank tonight. How did you decide on your Emmy's outfit? Actually, I, I threw in something I had in the closet, and it was that was it. It was that simple. Well, the luck was with you, and I hope yeah. it's with you tonight. Good luck. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Nice you. Perfect. Welcome back, everyone. Could you introduce yourself for our audience? I'm Chris Brower. Awesome. Are you up for any inner, um, any awards or anything tonight? I am not, but my daughter is. Oh, perfect. Come on in. Come on in. What's your name? I'm Angela Brower. Angela, and what award are you up for tonight? I'm up for four different categories, each for different stories that I did in the first half of 2022. Yeah. What kind of stories? What did they range from for you? Gosh, if I can remember, it was um, a health, health and medical or medical and science. Um, I had investigative series. Mm -hmm. I had politics and government, I believe, and the last one, I'll be surprised when they call it. How about that? <laughs> Which one do you feel the most confident on? Oh, gosh, it's, it's always tough competition at these things, so um, I'm not going in too confident. I, I'm very realistic, but the one I want to get the most, business consumer, that was the other category. I'm going up one of my, against one of my former colleagues, Justin Kolar, so we've had a little texting going back and forth of, you know who we think might win. A little be. feud, a little feud, I see. Very nice, perfect, Just awesome. You no, know, he said in the car, I don't want to do any interviews. <laughs> so that's why we threw him into this position. Thanks. Perfect, we caught you, there you go. <laughs> Thanks for very yeah, cool. Thank you guys so much, thank you, thank you. Nice meeting you guys. Hello everyone, we're here with Colin Hill from... Colleague Media. Colleague Media, I'm sorry I couldn't say it right with my French accent, but how are you feeling tonight? I'm feeling great. I'm here with uh, uh, great coworkers and friends, and we're here to celebrate good work, both ours and everyone else's in the community. Yes, we're very excited as well. Colin, what are you nominated for tonight? Uh, best Sports Documentary. If you were to win an award, where would you put it? Uh, on my kitchen table. Kitchen table, okay. Mm -hmm. So anything related to sport? I'm sorry? So nothing related to sport? Kitchen? Uh, yeah, kitchen, maybe, yeah. So we, we were nominated for Best Sports Documentary. We, we partnered with the Cleveland Guardians. Oh. Um, and they're a great partner of ours. We, we highlighted a group of young kids that went to um, from inner city Cleveland uh, to Chicago mm -hmm. for the RBI Regional Tournament. So um, you should watch it. It's 29 minutes long. It's really good. Um, yeah, check it out. Where can we watch it? Uh, you can watch it on YouTube. YouTube, okay. Uh, it was or on Valley Sports. Valley Sports, all right. Then we'll check this out. <laughs> and I hope you win tonight. Thank, Thank you, so, you much. so much for answering our question. Nice to meet you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. So Thank you. Bye. Hi, can you tell me your name and what you do? Sure. My name is Allison Gormley, and I'm the consumer reporter at WTHR, which is Channel 13 in Indy. Beautiful. So you had a little bit of a commute here. Yeah, about five hours, but I don't know. It's not what I learned when you moved to the Midwest. You can't complain about anything greater than three hours. It's like a two hour increment for the rest of the country. No, I feel you. I'm from Texas. Everything's like five hours to get out of Texas. Exactly. So that's normal. Exactly. I'm like, oh, only three hours. So what consumer report did you do? I'm assuming you're up for an award, right? Yes. Nominated for business consumer category. Now, what was your report about? So we submitted, we, the mouse in my pocket, you know, my producer and I submitted the, um, 
my series called What's the Deal? So instead of it being continuing coverage, it's my consumer brand. So two stories were in that submission. One was about pallet flipping. So people buy pallets of Amazon returns and then go flip them at garage sales. And then my second story was about a mom who lost her son and they were co-signers on a student loan for 31 grand and mom was on the hook after the son passed away. So we were able to get that loan forgiven. Oh, that's beautiful. And why do you think consumer reporting is so important? Because no one likes spending money, rich or poor. We all hate it. You need to save money. It's annoying. (laughs) Exactly. And in the age of inflation, I can't imagine how insane your job has become over the past couple of years. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, what started at the beginning of COVID, I was like, okay, this is my Super Bowl. I'm ready to go. (laughs) But then the Super Bowl was like every year, year after year after year. So, um, but it's, but it's an, I joke about it, but it's an important role. Anything to make someone or give someone a smarter decision or a smarter purchase. I mean, I love that stuff. It's kind of what I've done for fun my whole life. And um, I can't believe I'm paid for it now, to be honest with you. Yeah, it sounds like you get paid money to tell people how to spend their money. <laughs> These were the pointless conversations I had for years. And then they started giving me a paycheck and I was like, dope. And you get to be on TV for it? That rocks. Thank you so much for talking with me. Have a good rest of your night. Have fun. All right. So hello, everyone. We're here with Adam Wright from Helmlock Films. How are you, Adam, tonight? Doing well. It's a good night tonight. It is. Adam, what are you nominated for tonight? We're nominated for a web series that we produce called Why I Fly, about people involved in aviation. Oh, okay. And were you anticipating or hoping that you would get nominated tonight? Uh, Hoping I would be nominated and hoping we win. Uh, Anticipating, I've been to enough of these that I never know how fortunes will unfold. We might win, we might not, we'll see. But it'll be a good night nonetheless. If you win the award tonight, where would you guys put it? Uh, I don't want to sound weird by this. We'll put it with the rest of them that we have. Oh, okay. So <laughs> All right. how many have you won? Eleven. Eleven. And were they for the same category? Uh, roughly the same thing. Mostly we do documentaries and mostly about aviation and historical programs. So uh, it's nice to be recognized, particularly with so many talented people, uh, uh, that we can uh, kind of lift our head high and, and get, the, get the story out of what we're, what we're telling. Okay. Then I hope for you that you get one more tonight. So we'll see. Yes. We'll <laughs> twelve. See. Yep. All right. Then thank you so much, Adam. Absolutely. Thank you. It's a pleasure meeting you. Night. Welcome back, guys. Now, can you introduce yourself for everyone? Yeah, my name is Aaron Winarowski. Perfect. And we were talking a little bit, so you are up for an award tonight. Yeah, we've received two nominations: Indiana Donor Network. So the two uh, nominations are in the health and medical, and then the public ser- service announcement categories. Perfect. And uh, which one do you feel the most confident on? I got to ask. I don't know both, man. I don't, I don't know. I, uh, hopefully both. Um, both involve donor stories. Mm-hmm. So we actually went to the home of uh, donor families and we were able to talk to them about their loved one and the decision they made to become an organ donor. So it's just really powerful stuff, man. That is awesome. And it sounds like such a perfect message for people, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we try to uh, um, encourage people to sign up, say yes at the BMV or DMV to, to be an organ donor, um, and also just uh, spread the message of hope. Perfect. Aaron, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I appreciate Thanks, it. No problem. So hello, everyone. We're here with Brennan Walton from Indiana. How are you, Brennan, tonight? Hi. What was that? How are you tonight? Oh, I'm fantastic. Wonderful. Yes. Well, yeah. Excited? A little bit nervous, maybe? Uh, yeah, a little bit nervous, but I'm excited. Yeah, it's a good time. Have you a speech prepared if you win this award tonight? Uh, I do not have a speech prepared whatsoever. So if I win, that'll be really cool, but I am nervous to see what comes out of my mouth if I go up there. Brennan, what are you nominated for tonight? Uh, I'm nominated for, there's an editor, short form content, and then sports promotion, and then a news military story, and then I think it's a... Some investigative story that I just did some graphics for. That's it. Wow, so four different nominees? Okay. Yep. So you might be coming home with four. I do not think that's going to happen. No. But if it does, that'd be that'd be pretty cool. It's my first time being here, so this is exciting to just be a part of it, I guess. Yeah, it's cool. That's so great. And okay, so if someone else was to win tonight, who would you wish that tonight? Um, just literally anyone that I work with. Uh, I think everybody's been doing a really good job this year. Uh, put out a lot of good stories and yeah, just excited to see what happens. 
I love that. A good heart. <laughs> All right, then thank you so much, Brendan, and have a great night. Yeah, thank you. You guys too. Hope you win four nominees. Yes. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. All right, bye. Okay, now they're rolling up again. Hey, can y'all tell me your name and what you're here for? Sure. I'm Sia New Yorker, and uh, I'm with WOIL Channel 19. Beautiful. And are you up for an award? I am, yeah. We are up for a new special uh, for uh, our next 400 piece, uh, digging into the tangled roots of black hair culture. Yeah, and uh, we are also up for um, our... Um, our uh, Martin Luther King uh, special uh, that we did for nostalgia. So, yeah. That's beautiful. And you told me that your mentor is here. Can you tell me your name and what it's like to have your star pupil <laughs> out here tonight for an award? My name is Mr. Mentor. No, no, no. <laughs> Actually, it's Harry Boomer. C and I have been working together at Channels 19 and 43 for a long time. And, uh, you know, she's wonderful. She's always keeping me on the up and up. She helped me tie my bow tie. <laughs> I never would have tied it because I don't know how to do it, but thank you, Sia. And, uh, but she's a wonderful reporter and anchor and uh, what a joy to work with. And can you tell me what it means having all of this support? You said you got your boo thing and your mentor. How does it feel having all this support coming in with you to something that could be quite scary? Am I gonna win, am I not? Oh yeah, no, this is great to be here with your mentors and your friends and you know people that you look up to. Like everybody looks forward uh, to this uh, time of year. We see people in the field, but um, this is a time for us to be able to celebrate and uh, learn about each other's great works. You know, iron sharpens iron, so um, it, it's great to be here. That's incredible. And for my last question, do you think you can tell me why you think now it's so important to tell black stories? Oh my gosh, it was important then, but now it's even more important. Um, our storytelling really needs to reflect um, the way our audiences look. And so, you know, Mr. Boomer here has been on the streets for 51 years, is it? 52 years overall in broadcasting and 32 at channels 19 and 43. And to answer your question, if we don't tell our stories, they will not get told. And they will, if they get told, they'll be told from somebody else's perspective who doesn't necessarily understand our perspective. So it's important that we have a voice, that voice is heard, the faces are seen, and the stories are appreciated. Beautiful. Do y'all have anything else you want to add? No, just happy to be here and, um, you know, really happy to do this good work. Uh, I'm very blessed that I work uh, at a station uh, that makes the time that we're able to, to tell these kind of stories. Um, uh, it's not, it has not always been that way at uh, some of the places that I've worked at, but we're very fortunate that WOIO Channel 19 uh, embraces this storytelling and I should add that we did this pre-George Floyd. We were having these conversations, so we were uh, we were we were ahead of the game. We were having these conversations, looking for uh, answers and solutions. So it's really important that we keep having them, and it's not just uh, reactionary. We need to be ahead of the curve and to keep it going. Beautiful. Thank you guys so much. I'll send it back. Hello. Tonight we are here with Cedric Thomas from WKYZ TV. And what are you nominated for tonight? I'm nominated in the nostalgia category tonight. Okay. That's very nice. And also I just want to tell you right now that you look so good. I really love your outfit. Thank so you. then I'm going to ask you, what are you wearing? Who are you wearing? I like to take credit for all this fashion sense, but actually it's my wife who picked this out. And so I just put it on and try to look nice. I listen to her. That's my key to success. Exactly. The woman taste. Soul is the good thing. <laughs> and is this your first time being here tonight? I've actually attended two other ceremonies. I was at last year's ceremony as well, and it's just always an honor to come out and be amongst colleagues, former co-workers as well, and see wonderful faces, and it's a great night. If you were to win tonight, where would you put the award? If I were to win? Win tonight, where would you put your award? Uh, I would first take it to my parents' house for all the support that they've given me throughout the years. They're the reason why I chose television to go into TV as a career. So I think it would be a fitting tribute to give it to them for a while, and then I bring it back home. <laughs> oh, I love that. Then yeah. thank you so, so much, Cedric, for answering your questions, and I hope you have a great evening tonight. I will it's a pleasure meeting you. you. Nice meeting you all as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So hello, everyone. We're here with Chuck and Jenny. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're nominated for? 
I'm Chuck Lofton from WTHR in Indy. This is Jenny Runovich, of course. And uh, I'm nominated for three things. Uh, I have a, a series called Chuck's Big Adventure, where we go all over the country and uh, do stories that are uplifting, joyful, try to bring people a little bit closer to parts of the country they're not used to. So I'm nominated twice for that, and then uh, once for uh, meteorology, for my weather cast. Oh, I love that. And what about you, Jenny? Yeah, um, I'm an anchor reporter at WTHR in Indianapolis, and I actually have six nominations. Woo, wow. so, I know, I know. But several of them are group nominations, which is really special because our team is great, and we had a lot of big breaking news stories this year, and um, I was kind of part of the center of that. So a um, couple of those, a couple of stories that I did, and then nominated for an Best Anchor. So we'll, we'll see how Congratulations. Yeah, she's very deserving. Yeah. You know? yes. I'll pay him later. <laughs> if she wins six, I'm going to have to take half of them home. Her car can't handle all that. <laughs> I love it. Chuck and Jenny, is this your first time being here, or have you guys been here previous years? We have attended yeah. before, and I'm actually from the Cleveland area, even though I work in Indianapolis, and I went to Kent State. So, oh, yay, TV2. Okay. I graduated in 1998. So former it's been Flash. A while. Yes, I am a former Golden Flash. Yep. I've been a few times too, and last year I was inducted into the Silver Circle, which is one of the most uh, wonderful, uh, humbling things ever in my career. And I'm glad to see that John Butte, who was at Kent State, uh, is. Not, is in, going to be inducted into the gold circle, and I worked for him for a while at WTHR. Yeah. Chuck is very humble, but he is the nicest, most genuine, most talented meteorologist I've ever met. So it's a pleasure to be a colleague. I love to see people cheering each other yes. up. That's Me. the best thing. <laughs> so, like, are you hoping that each other wins an Emmy tonight? Of course. Are, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Jenny does incredible work, and would be. Just, she's a great reporter, but as far as an anchor is concerned, she could be anywhere in the country. And we're glad she's at WTHR, but uh, she's very deserving, so I'm very happy for her tonight. Ditto. So sweet. <laughs> if you were to win tonight, where would you put your Emmy? Um, actually, in our den, we have several that are already kind of there, so I would add to the collection. Add to the collection. <laughs> Sounds How about good. You, Jack? In my office. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have an office, and I've got a few Emmys, so I've they're all in my office there, so I can enjoy them. A collection. Yeah, yeah. a little bit, a little collection. <laughs> right, it was a I pleasure like meeting you guys. Yeah. I hope thank you guys you so win. Much. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. Thank you. All right, thank you. Welcome back, guys. Could you introduce yourself for everyone? Yes, I'm Taylor Brooke. I'm an anchor reporter for Spectrum News 1 in Ohio. Perfect, and we were just talking, so you're up for a ton of awards. I guess. I submitted eight, and I got nominated for five of those eight. That's awesome. Which one do you feel the most excited about or the most confident, you know? So I did a 30-minute TV special about the renewable energy in Ohio and how we have a lot more potential in Ohio to have renewable energy. There's a lot of effort, a lot of work, and I think that one might be the one that maybe will bring it home for me. Perfect. And then I want to know what is probably some of the best advice you have for young journalists in Ohio? I know we were just talking about it a little bit, so I'm throwing you off a little bit on this one. But what's the best advice you have for student journalists or anyone that's kind of like me in this in this field? You know what? I'm not too far from being a, a student journalist myself. I'm, I'm a young journalist still, so I would say the best advice I can have is try everything. If you're interested in sports, also do news. If you're interested in news, also do sports. Get as much experience as you possibly can, and then also just be yourself. Like you're watch people, you're going to say, you know, what do I say when I'm on the desk, right? Don't think like that. You don't want to be like anyone else. You want to be yourself, all right? You want to be as unique as possible because that people are going to watch you for you. So that's the best I can, the best advice I can give is just be yourself. Perfect. I will take that to heart for sure. Thank you so much. Nice meeting you. Good luck. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome, perfect. Welcome back, guys. Could you introduce yourself for everyone? Sure. My name is Mark Mullins. I'm an anchor at WRTV, the ABC affiliate in Indianapolis. Perfect. Are you up for any awards tonight? Up for five tonight. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I'm very honored and very humbled. It's the most that I've um, had nominations for, so when the list came, I was yeah. like floored. And so I'm very excited to, to be here tonight with my wonderful colleagues who work so hard at this team sport. That is awesome. Do you remember what categories you're up for by any chance? Sure, we're up for uh, team coverage, mm -hmm. 
best breaking news coverage, um, uh, continuing coverage, uh, and there's two more that, you know, now that you put me on the spot, I, I draw a blank, <laughs> but <enough>. yes. <laughs> that is awesome. And we were just talking a little bit ago. Do you have any advice for young journalists or student journalists like me going into this field for the future? Oh, of course. So my, my advice would be to read all you can yeah. and be open to listening. Listen to the stories because everyone's coming at you with a story and you just have to be in the moment listening to what they have to say. And when you continue to take in that information, you then turn the best stories. That is perfect information and great advice. Thank you Thanks. so much. Appreciate nice to meet that. you. Good luck. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you that. so much. You. Thank you. Okay, so can y'all tell me your names and what you do? Yes, I'm Rachel Wilkerson. I work for WRTV in Indianapolis. I'm an investigative reporter. Wow, that's incredible. And my two supporters. Hi, I'm Jessica, and I am a worker on Legends Eats and Beats. It's a new food truck coming to Indianapolis soon. I'm Devin Craig, and I work in communications in the city of Indianapolis. Beautiful. We got the indie crew here. Now, can you tell me what your investigative piece was about? Yes, it was uh, called JPC Affordable Housing that I'm nominated for. Basically, we had hundreds of people who were facing being without water because their landlords weren't paying the bills, although they were paying their water bill. It was included in their rent. And uh, we fought. We came to Ohio to track down the landlords and ask them why these tenants were put in that position and they shouldn't have been. And so that's what we're up for. And eventually these uh, residents did find some relief. So their water wasn't shut off. They weren't evicted from their apartment. So that was a blessing. That's beautiful. And what do y'all feel like as the supporters seeing her use journalism for good to tell stories of other people in need? Um, I feel like it's a great thing for Rachel. Um, I look up to her actually. She makes me want to do different things and bear off into other things also. So I'm just here to support her. Rachel's in her lane. She's an advocate for people that are typically like shut out, don't have a voice. She's their voice at WRTV and she does the, the hard work, asks the hard questions and people don't want to answer and she gets the results. Beautiful. And Miss Rachel, can you tell me why you think investigative reporting is so important? It's so important just to be a voice for the voiceless. Um, so many people need help, and that's what we're here for. Beautiful. Thank you all so much. Have fun and good luck. Hello, everyone. We're here with Lydia Williams from Indianapolis. How are you, Lydia? I'm doing well. They joined us in a really good conversation because we were having a good time here together. You <laughs> ladies are so nice. So thank you for hosting us. Oh my I'm here for my second year in the technical achievement category, so that's a little bit different in journalism, but what it's doing is connecting viewers with news in a whole new futuristic way without the use of a control room. So that's a big deal in the TV news industry. And I started at my station as a digital producer on the weekends 10 years ago. And now I am an EP, a senior content manager. We just got nominated and won a Murrow for this project. I'm the daughter of two TV journalists, and I'm so proud to be here and to show the future of news. Um, so. what, what advice would you give younger students or younger people looking in this career field? I would say learn anything you can, find people who will teach you everything, say yes to every opportunity. There is nothing that you can't learn and use to your advantage later. And just keep that positive attitude up. It's not always going to be easy. I love that. And also I want to tell you, you look so good tonight. And then obviously I'm going to ask this very girly question, but who are you wearing tonight? I'm actually wearing X Plus Wear. It's a beautiful online website. And and I just happened to find this dress before I even found out what the theme was. If you can believe it, it was meant to be. I saw it was Studio 54, and here we are. So thank you. Then you look great. You and look beautiful thank as you. well. Oh my God, and I hope you have a lot of fun tonight. Thank you. And then you can show up this beautiful dress. Yes. <laughs> thank you. All right, then thank you so much, Lisa. So Good luck. Thank you. Alrighty, everyone. I'm actually joined by some folks here from Indianapolis. Ooh. What a drive for you guys, huh? Yeah. So I did hear you are up for an award. Yes. You are? Perfect. What are you up yes. for? So we are up in the lifestyle category. We have a lifestyle show in Indianapolis, so we're thrilled to be here. Perfect. And then this is your co-host? Yeah. This is my co-host, 
Yes, we go back. Almost, the show's almost two years old. Indie Now, uh, we're on Fox 59 there in Indy. Really excited to be nominated tonight. The show's not even two years old, so to be nominated this young uh, is a true honor. So, excited. That's amazing. Yeah. Do you guys have plans to continue the show for a couple more years at least? Yes. You know, like Ryan said, we were just thrilled to be nominated with the show being so new. And when the show launched, you know, we were hoping that people would want to see positive local content. And since they've responded so well to it, we feel honored. We're going to see how far we could take it. So, yeah. That's perfect. I wish you guys good luck with your show and good luck with your award. Okay. Thank nice you meeting you guys. Awesome Thank good you job. so much. Good Thank job. you guys. Thank nice you. meeting you guys. All right, guys, welcome back. So I'm here with a very special guest. Actually, I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Hi, Dan Spieler. It's nice to meet you, Josh. I'm, I'm actually the president of the Great Lakes Emmys chapter, the Central Great Lakes chapter, and we're so thrilled you guys are here tonight to talk to everybody coming out to the Great Lakes Emmys. This is a lot of fun, and what a neat opportunity uh, for everybody there from Kent State. This is so cool. We're so glad you're here. It's been fantastic for all of us, I must say. But thank you guys so much for having us because this is a fantastic experience, I will say. How much preparation does an Emmy take? Well, to win an Emmy, it takes a lot of preparation, yeah. right? A lot yeah. of dedication, um, and a lot of creativity. I yeah. think a lot of the awards that you'll see win tonight yeah. are some of the awards that really stand out because they look different from everything else you see on TV. A lot of TV news, uh, has to be done at a fast pace and so sometimes you just have to get it done but to win an Emmy sometimes you have to do something just a little bit different that's going to inspire the audience make them think about something in a different way and those are oftentimes the kinds of news stories or documentaries or other types of TV segments that end up winning an Emmy. Perfect awesome thank you so much for your time thank awesome. you so much nice meeting you thank you so much thank you. Hello everyone, we're here with John Staley, producer of the AMEs. How are you John tonight? I'm doing well. Are you a little bit nervous though? I am very nervous. I'm always nervous before a big show. John, how many years have you been producing for the AMEs? Uh, this is my fourth year of producing. Fourth year? Okay. And how long have you been in this industry for? Oh God, since 1977. 1977. <laughs> Do you Long feel like time. it's been too much, though? No, 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 no. It's still, it's still fun. It's like it's you know the best job you can have without working. It really is. Is there any new thing that you like every year? Uh, new. I, I always try to try to put new technologies into the show on the on the cutting edge, and and tonight will hopefully reflect some of that in the transitions, the blind reveals. The technology used to produce the regional Emmy Awards is it's pretty astounding. From where it's come from where I've started to where it is now. And next year will be even better. John, what advice would you give young people looking in this industry for? Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Yeah, because it's a hard industry, is it? It's you know what it's a very tight knit group and it's a very small there there are only so many T V stations and production companies in the country. So it's a very tight knit group. And sometimes it can be very difficult to get in in a smaller market. But don't give up because you sure can. You sure can. I love it. Thank you so, so much, John, for answering our questions. And then I hope that everything goes well tonight. I hope yes. so, too. <laughs> thank you very All right, much. Thank you. Pleasure to meet you. Let's try this again. All can you right. tell me your name and what you do? My name is Barney Wood, and we are uh, representing um, Great Day TV today. But we're from Wood Innovative Group, and um, I'm the owner. She's uh, another co-owner. This is my wife, Dr. Lisa, and this is our son, Orion. Beautiful. It's a whole family affair. So yeah, are y'all up like for an award tonight? Family of village of uh, video production. The Partridge family. That's beautiful. So are y'all up for an award? Or are you presenting? Or are you just here because it's awesome? Or what? Yeah, we got nominated for the category in a uh, lifestyle. We did a, uh, a report on the Idle Jorg Museum. They have this like toy train set up for jingle rails, and uh, then we are presenting. Beautiful. And can you tell me how television has become a family affair for you and what it's like to have the whole family working together? It's been great. We started doing this. I'm usually kind of a behind the scenes guy like this guy. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the lady that um, uh, it's kind of been mentoring us is uh, Patty Spittler. And she's like, just get in front. You do it. And, you know, I did some stuff in the 90s. And that's uh, so then I'm like, Okay, then I'll bring my wife, who's a photographer, and she could do it. My son is a photographer, and it's like, okay, we'll get it, you know, a little multi-camera setup and make it a family thing. 
that's incredible. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your night and have a good time. Thank you so much. I'll send it back to y'all. <laughs> Hello, everyone. We're here with Sia, New Yorker from Channel 19. How are you doing, Sia? I am well. Thank you, ladies. Beautiful night. Glad to be here. Sia, what are you nominated for tonight? I I'm lucky and happy and blessed to be uh, nominated for three uh, nominations tonight. Uh, one for my reporting on a Martin Luther King Jr. special uh, that I uh, contributed uh, and reported for. And then I'm really excited uh, for, uh, I have two nominations for a report that I did uh, on a report called uh, Digging into the Tangled Roots of Black Hair Culture, uh, one for my writing and one for my reporting. And it was my passion project, so I'm really, really super excited about that. It's um, about the Crown Act and uh, hair discrimination, and uh, I'm just, I'm really excited that the, uh, the Academy recognized the work. Very important things to recognize. Thank you, yes, thank you. And were you hoping or anticipating to get nominated tonight? Yeah, I was, I was. Um, you know, I poured my heart and soul uh, into the project and uh, to get this nomination, um, it really it really holds a lot of weight and means a lot to me. Um, so I'm, I'm just happy to be even nominated, but it would be a cherry on top of the cake if I won. Yeah. Then I really hope for you. It was a pleasure to meet you. Thank I hope you, you win. Thank, you, ladies. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. Have a great night. Welcome back, guys. I'm going to let you introduce yourself. We've been talking Cleveland sports this entire time. It's been fun and also painful at the same time. But my name is Justin Kolar. This is my wife, Nikki Meppel, or Nikki Kolar, my wife. Excuse me. And uh, I am the traffic anchor for CBS4 WTTV in Indianapolis, Indiana. And you said you are up for an award tonight. I am, yes. It's in the business and consumer category, so stay tuned for that. It's the battle between store and name brands. Had an absolute blast putting that together. As you know, inflation's been so hard for a lot of folks. And uh, through this story, we just tried to dig into that a little bit more and see is there really a huge difference between the store brands and the name brands. It turned out to be really fun. So That does sound like a fun one. Uh, fun one. Was there a difference? There was no difference in taste. There was a huge difference in price. So, really? Next time you go to the grocery store, really can't tell the difference. It's all, yeah, it's all up there. I got to put that to mind. I got to put that to mind. So, and then we were talking about Cleveland sports for a little bit. And I want to ask you, we were talking about this. What do you think of the new dog logo for the Browns? Okay, so here's the deal. I, I won't deny this. We were just on vacation in Yellowstone the last week when the voting was going on. Every time I had service, I was voting for the other logo. But oh, no. now oh, that no. we're here in the land, yeah. I have family from here, so I yeah. can say that, it's growing on me. All the symbolism behind the logo, it's, it's growing on me. So I'm excited to get it on a hat or a shirt or something and start barking. <laughs> there we go. Hoo, 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 hoo. <laughs> it was so nice meeting you guys. Thank you guys for your time. Thank you guys so much. Good luck. Thank you. Hello, everyone. We're here with Mike and Tom from Pennsylvania. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, I'm uh, the executive producer for a television show called Chronicles. We're nominated for six Emmys tonight. Oh, and so, uh, along with uh, WQLN, and this is lovely. Hi, yes. Hi I'm, I'm Tom, series producer for Chronicles. <laughs> so nice, and congratulations on your six nominations. Can you tell us about some of them? Sure, uh, we're multiple categories. We're pretty much, uh, we are an anthology series that's a docu-series uh, focusing on the history of the Lake Erie region. Um, Mike and Tom, is this your first time being here? It is, it is. First time. Uh, we, we've not had the, uh, the fortune of, of being involved in a show that's allowed us to be here, and we're, we're very flattered to be here this evening. How long have you guys been in this industry for? Oh, wow. Oh. Uh, <laughs> that's like asking a woman how old she is. Let's not go there. Um, but we, 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 yeah, we, we've, we've been in this industry for uh, a number of years. But we've been engaged with WQLN for the last sort of 18 months or yeah. so, um, and it's been a, an absolute privilege to, to be involved in the show. Well, we wish you guys luck winning. Uh, thank you very yeah. much. Good luck yeah. tonight. Thank you so much for answering your questions, and have a great night. Thank, thank you. you. Enjoy your thank night. You. Yeah. Bye. 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 Thank Bye. you. Okay, beautiful. I have three friends with me. Can you tell me who this little guy is and tell me about you? I'm Zarg, and we're here because Peggy's Poetry and Zarg is up for a children's uh, programming Emmy. Now, can you tell me about his program a little bit? Uh, as far as him? Yes. Uh, well, actually, Emily designed him, Zarg, and we created the show to actually teach children about poetry. And Zarg is 
the monster in Peggy's bedroom in the in the closet. And so um, she faces her fears by actually reading poetry to Zarg, and then uh, eventually she teaches him how to read. Peggy, can you tell me what inspired you to make this little guy? Uh, honestly, Russell's words. Uh, he wrote the script, and we did some character profiles when we started to build the show. And I just took all of the words, and I went, oh, well, he looks like that. And I did a rendering like I usually do when I do my designs. And actually, this was one of these cases that the rendering looks exactly like Zarg. So it was just very meant to be. I knew, like, in my heart what he was supposed to look like. And, uh, yeah, that was it. And y'all told me that y'all have been up with his show for a couple of years, Zarg. Do you think you can tell me if you think it's finally your time? What? Oh, I, I hope so. We'll see. Uh, uh, fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank y'all so much. Good luck and good luck to you, Zarg. We'll see y'all later. Okay, hello everyone. We're here with the Shrooms family. I will, can you introduce? Yeah, I'm, I'm Adam. This is my mom, Debbie. Yeah, I'm Kaylin Kendall. And I'm Miranda, uh, Adam's sister. And what are you guys nominated for tonight? A number of categories. Our station is nominated for a couple uh, continuing coverage awards. Weather, the morning show, a uh, special event. You're nominated for a great category as well. Yeah, feature, news feature package as well. So, several nominations. I think we have a handful of nominations for the station as a whole. How long have you guys been in the business for? The shoe I've been in the business since 2018, so almost five years. Okay. I've been way too long to count. It's just a journey, and you just try to get better every single day. And my daughter and I flew here from Florida, so we can uh, be here to support them. They're the real star of the show. They've only slept about two hours, got on multiple flights just to make it happen today. Make it happen today. Yeah. I love that, a lot of support that yeah. from the best. Yeah. I love this, oh my God. Then um, I hope for the best for you guys tonight okay. and thank then you. have a great evening. We appreciate you Yeah, guys. thank you, Good luck. bye. Welcome back everyone. Can you introduce yourself for everyone for me? Hello everyone, I'm Birochelle Edme. I'm the main evening anchor at Fox 59 in Indianapolis. Indianapolis! I have met so many people from Indianapolis We're well today. Represented. We're well represented. They we have all been fantastic. Hospitality to Cleveland. <laughs> And uh, are you up for any awards tonight? I am. I am. I'm up for several. So one of them is for our daytime newscast covering a cold case that's been going on for several years. Some in the region have heard about it, the Delphi murder case. Sadly, two teen girls were murdered on a trail. They were, you know, doing what teens do, going out for a walk, enjoying the nature and just having a good time. And sadly, a tragedy happened. So we've been covering that for the last five to six years. And finally, that newscast that's nominated is for when someone was arrested. So that's one newscast as well, talent anchor and two reports that I got to do that were exclusive investigations. One for uh, what's going on with airlines right now and unruly passengers. Another that looks at the history of lynching in Indiana. Mm. Wow, you're up for a ton of awards. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, I feel super lucky to be here in this space. I'm supported by amazing people that help me do the stories I do and to be on television. So as much as I'm nominated for some, it's truly team effort and that's not me just being cliche. It is honestly the only way the news goes on. So. That is awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Nice meeting you. I wish you all the best of luck for all your nominations. We have our first award recipient to speak to. Can you tell me what category you just won in? Yeah, it was a uh, photographer or director of photography, long form, and host narrator. And your name? Uh, my name is Len Brown. And Mr. Brown, can you tell me what this award means to you? Well, it's actually uh, really amazing to be able to win this. Um, I've been in television for 32 years, and this is the first time I've gotten an Emmy. <laughs> so, so it really means a lot. Um, this was a uh, uh, it was a real honor to tell such an incredible story. The, the, the film that we were nominated for and then ultimately won was called Engineering Tragedy, the Ashtabula Train Disaster, about the, the Ashtabula Train Disaster of 1876. And it was a lost story in American history, but it was a national story, and it really helped you know, change the way America built its infrastructure during the Industrial Revolution. And it, um, um, and it really did, um, brought about all the new modern bridge building codes that we have. As, uh, as well as the whole occupation of engineering consultation. So to be able to tell that story um, was just a tremendous honor. 
That's so beautiful. And can you tell me why you think the story is one that's so important for people to know in the 21st century today? Well, we've had a lot of train derailments um, <laughs> this year. And the Ashtabula train disaster was a disaster that affected change nationally with new government regulation, new, new uh, bridge inspections that, that were brought about, um, standardized ways of building bridges. And, uh, uh, and it was the first time that the federal government actually began to regulate big business because the government never, never had uh, worked with biz big business before. So it, was, it, was, uh, it, it brought about that change. And of course, like today, with, uh, with some of the things that are happening with, on the railroads, it, uh, uh, it's again kind of another national story where maybe history is repeating itself. Thank you so much for your time. Have a good rest of your night. Thank you. Thank you. Hello and congratulations. Can you present yourself? My name is Jean Marie Papoy. I'm a producer of arts and culture at uh, WVZ PBS in Cleveland. Nice. And for which uh, category did you win tonight? Um, arts and entertainment news. How do you feel about winning this award? Um, it's really, it's a really big honor for me. It feels very important. I haven't won one on my own before, um, so I'm really excited to take it home. Yeah. And where do you think you were going to put it then at home? <laughs> uh, in my office, I think, so I can see it while I'm creating other great projects. Oh, that's perfect. Then it's more you're going to keep going with your work. Then it's kind of an inspiration for the future, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, I think you put it right. Okay, then perfect. Thank you so much and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> and to your team as well. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I am with one of the winners. Can you introduce yourself for everyone? Rebecca Fisher. Perfect. And what did you win for? A uh, long form documentary. Awesome. What was your documentary about? Um, it was called Arab Indianapolis, A Hidden History. And it was about um, the immigra immigration of Arab Americans into our city of Indianapolis and how they became part of the fabric of the community. That's awesome. I've met so many people from Indianapolis today. All have been fantastic, all pleasant people. It's been, it's been really an awesome day. But um, what does this Emmy mean to you, though? Oh my goodness, it's completely overwhelming. Um, kind of a little bit of a childhood dream to get this and um, really just an honor because the story was so great to tell and we're so excited to have won. That is awesome. Thank you so much for taking your time with us. Thank Congratulations you. once again. Thanks. Hey y'all, we're back with the red carpet show of the Westlake Local Emmys. We are here with our next award recipient. Can you introduce yourself along with what award you yeah, just won? Yeah. Uh, Jonathan Walsh, News 5 investigator uh, with Channel 5 News in Cleveland. Um, and we just won for uh, best consumer business category. And why do you think consumer business is important for the average viewer? Well. Uh, we get a lot of fraud instances in Northeast Ohio, across the country, but uh, you know, people call us so we can hold the, the fraudsters accountable. And that's what we did here. Um, we went undercover, we showed that this particular person was doing these crimes over and over and over again, and now she's facing six felonies. Her trial starts next month. And without us getting involved, I'm not sure police or the courts would have paid attention. So. That's the power of journalism, as you guys know. Exactly. How do you think that your job plays into working with the justice system to hold others accountable? So I think it works. Well, I hope it works cohesively. A lot of times we point out things that they're not doing. Um, I was uh, nominated for a different story, pools of problems where we had contractors who were ripping people off in different counties and the counties weren't talking to each other. And so we pointed out to the prosecutors, hey, these guys are committing crimes while they're on probation. And so the next day in court, that's when they showed up and said, oh, we've been made aware that this gentleman has uh, other instances going on. So it's important. It's, it's supposed to be co cohesive, but a lot of times, you know, we help in, in, in informing them because their stacks are this high. You know, anytime any prosecutor is tr just trying to get through a stack this big, so. Absolutely. And he is going to be my first award for best dress tonight. Whoa. He understood the assignment with the disco theme. Can you show me the John Travolta moves you were telling me about? <laughs> Thank you so much and congratulations. Have a good rest of your night. Thank you very much. Well done.
Thank you. All right, thanks, guys. Well, Congratulations. Thank you so much. So remind us, um, for what category did you win tonight? This was light feature, uh, news feature, light feature. Um, kid named Max Stakelich, who is a guitar prodigy, 12 years old at the time, plays like Jimi Hendrix, um, and got his big chance to play at a Cleveland Browns game. Uh, he got to play ACDC's Thunderstruck, and he wowed the crowd, and I was lucky enough to capture that. and. I won, and I'm shocked. Oh my god, well congratulations, I'm so happy for you because you. we interviewed you earlier and we were rooting for you, to yes. be honest, so. Yes, thank you. And your story really spread through media. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely did. Um, the, the kid ended up gaining a lot of followers, so mm. it's, it's, it, it warms my heart. And you said it was on YouTube, you could see it? Uh, it's on our website, fox8.com, um, and uh, you, can, you can go there and head it. Uh, look for, for Max Stack. M-A-X-S-T-A-K, -A -A and you'll find it there. He came on our show as well um, and, and performed a lot. Um, he was, they were doing a stump the stack, um, like sending in song requests and seeing if he could play them, and he played every single one of them. He's just an amazing, an amazing and kid. Do you play yourself some guitar? I don't, but um, Max is you know, an inspiring kid, and I might have to take some lessons. Well, you'll have to show us sometime. <laughs> but all right, thank you so much. Congratulations and have a great evening. Thank you. Lee. And for the second time tonight, congratulations. Can you introduce yourself one more time for our audience? Uh, Rebecca Fisher and uh, accepting for writing for a long form documentary. So what was this documentary centered about? I know it's a little bit different than your first one. No, no, the same program. Oh, same program, there <laughs> same you go. Program. So yeah. Arab Indianapolis, mm -hmm. about the um, Arab immigration to mm -hmm. Indianapolis. Oh, okay, so was this like a sequel or like a, a follow-up to the first one? No, 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 this is just the writing mm -hmm. award instead of documentary. Oh. Oh, perfect. Awesome. So now you have two of them. Yes. So where you, you got to figure out somewhere to put them in your house. Uh -huh. <laughs> where do you think you're going to put your two Emmys? Oh, in my office so they appear mm. in all my Zoom backgrounds. That's oh. my plan. That's a that's a flex right there. That's a flex. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much again. Thank you, Thank you and congratulations once again. Thank no problem. Hello, hello. We are back with yet another winner. Can y'all tell me what award y'all just received? Uh, it was for a public service announcement. Wow, a PSA. And what was that PSA about? It was about downtown Cleveland and just bringing the city together and how it's the core of Ohio. Oh, that's so beautiful. And why did y'all decide to make this PSA? Oh, I think it's because we've just loved telling their story for years and years. And it's just something that we, I think, were born to do. That's incredible. Thank y'all so much. I'm so happy for you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank y'all. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We are with Jenny Renovich. And what category did you win your award in? Uh, this was the health and medicals health category. Medical. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's very nice. And, okay, can you tell us about it a little bit? Sure. So it was called On the Clock, and it was basically a woman who needed a double organ transplant, and she got the call that, okay, it's time to go, come to the hospital so that it can happen. But it just so happened to be it was a stormy night, and she was over an hour away from the hospital, and she only had an hour to get there. So she was on the clock. They ended up having to speed. They met up with some firefighters, and they ended up getting to the hospital just in time to save her life so it was pretty special to, to share very, yeah, very story. moving sorry yeah. yes definitely then really congratulations and then I hope that you'll celebrate tonight do you have any plans for celebrating oh. yeah um, you know just enjoying the evening so go back for more congratulations Perfect. all right thank you so much Thanks, hello 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 we are here with mr. Jim Nelson who just received an award I got to talk to him earlier tonight so I'm super excited to hear about this award can you tell me about what award you won and what the project was yeah it was for uh, societal concerns and the story was we followed along a group of undercover police officers as they investigated sex crimes essentially um, prostitution and they gave us all access to what they were doing and for us, it was about shining a light on a problem that our entire, you could say the entire world, but our region especially is facing. And 
to be able to put a spotlight on that and the work that people are doing to combat that was uh, really a privilege. Wow, that's incredible. And why do you think these stories need to be told? Because we, we need a spotlight on them. Um, they're undertold. Uh, it sounds like such a simple answer to say that we need to tell these stories because they're not being told enough. Um, there are so many people who just don't know what's going on in our communities, in our own backyards. And to be able to do that was, it really was a, a privilege. It's a story that nobody wants to tell, but it's a story that has to be told. Thank you so much for your time. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a good rest of your night. Hello, everyone. I'm joined by Taylor Brooke. I actually talked to Taylor before uh, on the red carpet, yep. and I'm so excited that you won. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Yes, this is uh, like an absolute honor. I cannot even imagine. Like, you, you, you put so much work and effort into this, and you obviously pay to get nominated, you know, you to pay, <laughs> hopefully, hoping to get nominated, yeah. and then to win. Oh, my God. That's I don't know fantastic. How to, I don't know how to describe the feeling? Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say. So, how does this feel for you now that you've gotten your first Emmy? I have not stopped smiling just from being here. I think it's a really cool experience. But when I got the nominate or when I won the mm -hmm. Emmy, I, I tears almost came to my yeah. eyes. <laughs> I'm three years out of college, you know. Like yeah. this is new. I'm a young journalist, yeah. so this is outstanding to know that people are liking what I'm doing, my work. That is fantastic. And you're up for a couple more nominations, right? Yep. So good luck on that. And thank you so much for thank spending you your time so with much. us. We'll send it back to you guys. We'll see you guys in a bit. Welcome back and congratulations, guys. Can you present yourself? My name is Kevin Leibel. I'm Matt Eck with the Cavaliers. And for which category did you win tonight? Uh, Sports promotion campaign. What was your story about? Um, well, it was just uh, our campaign, our city edition uh, jerseys. We partnered with the Metro Parks uh, this year, and we were able to just do what we do, but also show off a great entity, uh, the Cleveland Metro Parks, with our partners over at Think Media Studios. Okay. And how does it feel to win? It, it feels great to win. Uh, we, this is, uh, I forget how many I've won, I think it's like two or three, but we've also had some um, people that have never won before mm -hmm. in our large group and we're a team. Uh, so it, it feels really good. And also not only us that have won the award, but all those people that work so hard behind the scenes, our project managers, our um, producers, our editors that go well beyond this, um, they're owed a thank you as well. Mm -hmm. That's very sweet. Then really congratulations, guys, and I hope you have a great night. Do you, are you, do you have any plans to celebrate that tonight? Are you going to all do something as a group? Just give a good hug for about 30 seconds and then uh, have a couple of drinks, you know? Okay. Well, that sounds great. Don't look on the street. We're going afterwards. I love that. Sounds good. All right. Then I have done tonight, and then we'll see you soon. Welcome back, everyone. I'm back with some more winners. I'm going to let you guys introduce yourselves. I'm Caitlin Kendall. And I'm Mark Mullins. We're from WRTV in Indianapolis, the ABC affiliate there. And I spoke to you guys a little bit earlier, and I am, I'm so excited for you guys. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, can you describe to everyone what you won for? Yeah, we won the special event coverage. It was for a tragic story, as Mark mentioned, when we accepted our award for an officer who was killed in the line of duty. Mm -hmm. It was a very taxing week, but it was mm -hmm. one that was filled with a lot of teamwork. Mm -hmm. So we were able to go to his funeral. It was mm -hmm. coverage from outside of his funeral and then inside of his funeral. So a lot of people partook in this award. We really wanted to uh, show our viewers on that day just just the emotion uh, of, of that, that the family was expressing, and the man that Officer Noah Shanavez was. And we're proud that um, our coverage and our storytelling that day earned us an Emmy. That's fantastic. That is a fantastic story to tell to everyone. And I'm so happy for you guys. Congratulations. You so no problem. And we'll send it back to you guys. We'll be back in just a bit. Hello, hello, hello. We are back with another award winner. We have a fancy special guest from the Cavs here tonight. You probably know this man's voice from watching all of your basketball games. Can you tell me your name and what award you just won? <laughs> John Michael, it's for play by play and for analyst. Uh, thank you. Beautiful. Can you tell me what it has been like watching the Cavs this season, of course, going into the playoffs, what it's been like to call those games? Yeah, fantastic. It's a good question. It's been a team that's been on the rise, and it's nice to see them take that next step into the playoffs. And now hopefully next season we take another step, make some, do some damage in the playoffs. So uh, it's been great watching this team. 
I was just about to ask, what move do you think the Cavs need to make? Ah, that's a really good question. We'll see what happens. I think uh, this offseason is a big one. I think a team knows what it needs to do to, again, you know, get into the playoffs. Not just get into the playoffs like they did this season, but be able to get in there and – beat some teams, maybe win a round or two. So uh, it's going to be fun to watch what they do this offseason. Draft-wise, they don't have a first-round pick, but again, they're always active. They always have their heads up in terms of what they can do during the offseason. I think it's going to be fun. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Be sure to listen to his voice every time you watch the Cavs game. Thank you so much for hanging with us. Thank you. Have a good rest of your night. Congrats. What's going on, guys? Welcome back. I'm here with some winners. I'm going to let you guys introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Robert Ruggieri. I'm with Think Media Studios. And I'm Dave McAlatton with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Perfect. And uh, what Emmy did you win for? Best uh, Sports Promotion. Awesome. Perfect. And I'm assuming it was for the Cavs? It is. Yeah, for, it is. Our, for our intro video this year uh, featuring MGK. That it's intro video. And Kelly, yeah. If you don't know <laughs> what MGK is, yeah. That intro video gave me chills. I went to tons of Cavs games with Till I Die in the background. Oh, man, I know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm a diehard. I'm a diehard. Yes, yeah, Those that, that was just a fantastic opening. Me and my dad went to probably like three games, four games this season. Every time they had that intro video, chills down my spine. But congratulations to you guys. What does this Emmy mean for you? I just think it's it's awesome just to be a Clevelander and to be a Cavs fan and to be yeah. able to shoot something like that with Machine Gun Kelly, mm-hmm. a local you know icon. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's just amazing to be able to go to the game. I got to go there with my son and my family, and watch that up on the on the jumbotron. So it's very cool for me. And then just to continue the partnership with the Cavs is amazing because they do amazing stuff. So. I'll let you speak on behalf of no, that. No, no, exactly what Brian said. And then, like, basically, like I said, the the biggest thing for us is kind of both what you guys both said is being able to bring your family members, your dads, your sons to the games and create memories. That's really the best part of our job is basically being part of that where people are like, hey, I remember when I went to the game and I saw the MGK open and everything like that. We love to create memories. And so that, that's that's the biggest and best part of our job. Now, do we have any ideas for next year's opener? I do, but I have not pitched it to them. I actually, I actually put together a yeah. huge presentation of something I wanted to do for the end of the year video for the playoffs. I didn't even get a chance to pitch it because they came to us with an idea already. But next year, I have something that I've been cooking up for a long time. There so. we go. But hey, yeah. I'm excited for it. And hopefully next year we'll make a deeper run into the oh, playoffs. Yeah, that way you can yeah. make a couple more promos. Yeah, we're <laughs> Perfect. Thank you guys so yeah, much. Congratulations you. once again. No problem. We'll be right back with more award winners. Hello, hello, hello. We are back with another winner here. Can you introduce yourself and tell me what category you just took home? I'm uh, John Duran. I work at WTHR in Indianapolis and won the uh, Human Interest Single Shift. Uh, Miles in- Inspiration was the, uh, was the story. Wow, that's incredible. There's nothing I love more than a good human inspiration piece. Can you tell me the story? Yeah. Bring me to tears. <laughs> We have to watch it, but it was <laughs> Andrew Peterson, uh, an Indianapolis native, uh, Special Olympics athlete, really had an uphill climb his entire life, an accomplished athlete, Boston Marathon winner, oh, wow. an incredible runner, uh, decided to take his talents to the, the coaching ranks and coached other uh, Special Olympics athletes to uh, train for, compete, and finish the Indy Mini Marathon, which is a big deal in Indianapolis, the biggest half marathon in the United States, and they did it. Uh, so I, I caught a little bit of their preparation, um, which was uh, just inspiring, I guess. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. Can you tell me what made you decide to do this piece? Uh, I actually, um, he is a popular guy in Indianapolis. Uh, I know our station has done a few stories with him already. His dad reached out to me and, um, or somehow the the story got passed along to me and I'm like, man, this is incredible. We got to honor this guy for uh, the work he's doing. So I obviously jumped on it, um, getting to meet Andrew. And I've actually done a story with him since he's uh, an awesome guy and does awesome work. So I just was privileged to, to be the one that, that got to tell that story. What do you think Andrew's going to say when you tell him we got one? Man, I can't wait to text Andrew or, or hit him up on Facebook. Uh, but I don't, I don't think he'd be surprised. I think he's, uh, he's a he, – this won't be the last uh, <laughs> we hear of Andrew. I think, I think his, his stories are, are, are uh, award-winning. You know, anything he does is, is really great work. So, like I said, I was lucky enough to be there that day. Thank you so much. We look forward to seeing a lot more inspirational work and a lot more awards. We'll be right back. 
Hey y'all, I'm Della Fowler and we are here with another winner. Can you please tell me your name and what you just took home? Hi, Corey Fisher. Um, we just were awarded an Emmy for long form editing. Wow, can you tell me what it's life like editing? Does not sound fun, respectfully. It only must be for special people like you. You have to like the dark and uh, you have to not care too much about staying out of the sun, staying out of the sun all that stuff. I uh, know, it's great. Um, you know, it's a, a man and his computer, and that's, that's the end of the story. And I mean, we need editors like people need water to drink. It's incredible. Can you tell me why you chose to become an editor? Uh, well, I've been making movies since I was a kid, since I had a little shoulder-mounted um, VHS camcorder, and um, I'm one of the few people I grew up with that is continuing to do the things that they love doing as a kid. And um, there it is. And how do you plan on celebrating your award tonight? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm taking advice. Maybe he'll have to hit the dance floor with the disco. We'll be right back. Hey, guys. My name is Della Fowler. I'm sure you've seen me all over the red card, but I just wanted to share my Kent State story. As I shared earlier, I'm from a small town outside of Houston, Texas, but I grew up loving journalism in high school. My team was actually blessed enough to be able to be invited to the National Scholastic Journalism Convention in Washington, D.C. in 2019. There I met a scout named Katie Payette who showed me all of the things at Kent State. She was the former GM of TV2 and she basically won my heart and the rest is history. I came to Kent. Kent awarded me with a lot of money so I could be able to afford to go here. and. I've loved every single second of it. I've been able to work in our sports department alongside my friend Josh and been able to report amazing things like standing here at the Emmys or, you know, being on the field at the Guardians games. Josh, how about your experience? I was actually recommended to go to Kent State from my journalism teacher as well. He uh, went to Kent State, did TV2 and everything. He was like, Josh, this would be a perfect fit if you want to do journalism. So I did that. and. TV2 has blessed me with so many opportunities. Uh, this past year, I was able to cover the MAC championship at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse, and thank God Kent State was able to bring home the trophy and uh, won the MAC, which was an amazing experience to see in person. It felt like my NBA team was winning a championship and I was there, so it was an amazing opportunity. That's incredible. Yeah, Kent State Journalism awards so many outstanding opportunities and every single student gets to be the star. And we're gonna keep going with us being the stars of this red carpet show, talking to all of the best in the biz. Welcome back and I'm here with a beautiful winner tonight. Can you present yourself? Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm Nikki Dementri and I was gonna say right back at you, Lady in Green, absolutely stunning. I'm so excited to be here with you all. You guys You're so sweet, thank you so much. Can you tell us uh, in which category you won your award and can you tell us a little bit about it? Absolutely, so I won for Sports Story News. Um, I'm a general assignment reporter um, and I'm an MMJ. So I do a little bit of everything. I do sports, I do consumer, I do breaking, I do everything. So. This story was so special. Lucas Grounds is one of the most amazing teenagers I ever had the chance to meet. I met him a couple months after he got into an accident. He just signed to go GNCC Pro, so a motorbike uh, pro, and he hit a covered bridge and was paralyzed. And he was working back towards it, getting back on that track. Today he is back on that track, and we were able to, you know, go through all of that. And it was just an amazing time to be able to be there. Um, I thank him for letting me share his story with everyone everyone and just giving that inspiration to us all. Oh, I loved it. Then you're an inspiration to us oh, all then. Thank <laughs> then thank you so much for answering my question and then we'll be back soon. And we would like to give a very special thank you to Classic Teleproductions in Twinsburg, Ohio. They are providing us with all of their equipment and some helping hands. They have been great as a um, telling us how to manage uh, this Emmy production and we're very thankful that they were here for us throughout this whole project. We couldn't do it without you, Classic. Thank you guys, thank you so much. Hey y'all, I'm Della Fowler and we are back with some more winners, some sports winners in the peak of baseball season. Can you y'all tell me what award you just won? Uh, we won the Emmy for entertainment. Beautiful, and your names? Uh, Mike Donnellan. Steve Asbury. 
Beautiful. And what kind of entertainment did y'all do? So we uh, produced the video on the uh, runs on the scoreboard. Um, this video specifically runs when the team takes the field uh, every game. Um, yeah, trying to get the team and the crowd hyped up before the game starts. It's the, the inaugural uh, team take the field video for the Cleveland Guardians, our first year as the, uh, as the Cleveland Guardians. So I'm glad that we could uh, bring some har hardware home for it. Yeah, the guards aren't my team, but living up here and going to Guardians games, the aesthetic of it all is impeccable. If you haven't seen it, it's a play on the bridge, right? Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, so we, um, we use some of the bridge artwork in the video, uh, as well as some of our art deco theme, um, really working those elements together to try to build out the logo um, in kind of a hype style with some highlights uh, as the you know, video progresses. And how are y'all feeling about this season so far? We're almost to the all-star break, so halfway through. Feeling good. Feeling okay. like uh, got a shot at the division, and hopefully they keep winning some baseball games, and uh, we keep uh, having fun at the ballpark. S slow start, but we're going to get there. We got, uh, we got a good guy, group of guys out there, and all, all that matters is that we get hot at the right time, and uh, I believe in this team for sure. No, y'all's bullpen scares me. We'll be right back with more interviews and more. Have a good night, and we'll be there soon. Welcome back. I am here with Gabriel. Can you present yourself a little bit, Gabriel, and which award you won tonight? Yeah, um, I just won the Documentary Cultural Award. Uh, David C. Barnett, my partner, crime co-producer on the documentary, couldn't be here. He's enjoying retirement. Thank you. We work, he used to work for Ideas for Public Media, PBS and NPR stations in Cleveland. WV is our call letters, and I am a proud TV2 Kent State graduate. I love this. Um, then in which uh, bachelor did you graduate? What was your program? I'm a JMC, Broadcast Journalism graduate. The year was 2014. So <laughs> that's, uh, I like to think of it not that long ago, but I guess it's a little bit long ago. So. Oh, well, congratulations for well, being a, um, a, an old falcon and then on your over tonight. Yeah. And have a great night tonight. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. And for the second time tonight, hey, the I, second I time tonight, know, can you reintroduce yourself for everyone? Yeah, uh, Jonathan Walsh, News 5 investigator with Channel 5 News in Cleveland. Or as everyone here would like to call you, John Travolta. Well, right? Well, right? He, I, like I said, he's, he's now looking like me. I, I uh, you know, some kind of copyright infringement exactly, or yeah. TMs. I like you said, that NIL. <laughs> you got to get something out of there. <laughs> I, I, need a, I need a lawyer, so anybody, uh, anybody in the house? Anybody with a law degree, please, uh, <laughs> please contact us over oh, now. Oh, <laughs> we do, we do. Yeah. Well, congratulations again. What does it mean to get your second Emmy of the yeah, night for you? Um, Look, it's this isn't me. This is our staff. This is I'm standing on the shoulders of giants because this is the best investigative unit I've ever worked for. Um, the creativity, the commitment to uh, righting the wrongs, um, and it just all comes together. I mean, the ideas flow from me to my executive producer to uh, the photographer. We all work really well together, and it just I'm lucky. I'm a lucky guy. Yeah. That's awesome. Teamwork makes the dream work. That's <laughs> and it. Then some, right? then, and then, then some. some. Sure. I appreciate you yeah. talking with Thanks, us. Congratulations yeah. again. Yeah, no problem. Thank you so much. Okay. And we will be right back. Hello, hello, hello. We have Courtney and Jeanette, our latest winners. Can y'all tell me what you just won? So we just won in the category of diversity, equity, and inclusion news. Um, for our series, it's called Delivering Better Results. Um, and it focuses on maternal and infant mortality rates here in Northeast Ohio. Wow, that's incredible. And what do you think motivated y'all to tell this story? Um, you want to take this? Well, I would say um, I've been in the Cleveland market almost 10 years, and year after year we're seeing these high numbers of black women and babies dying at a disproportionate rate. And it was just time to really tell a story and shine a light on it because we can do better, and they deserve better. And what does this award mean to communities who you think have been overlooked in the past, like the mortality rates? I think this means the world, I, I feel like more people are starting to pay attention to this issue. It's a crisis right now. When we talk about black women dying, as a res black women are dying trying to give birth, and yes. that should not be happening. And, it, and black women are dying at disproportionate rates. Black women die at a rate three to four times higher than any other woman in this country, and the numbers are getting worse. They're worse the, the numbers are worse than they were 20 years ago. And so we have to do something. We have all these advances in technology, Black women should not be dying trying to give birth. 
Absolutely. Thank you all so much for your peace of mind. And we thank them for telling the stories of those who cannot stick around. We'll have more later on everyone and I'm here with a familiar face that I interviewed on the red carpet. Could you introduce yourself for uh, all of our audience? Yeah, my name is Aaron Winorowski. And uh, what did you win the Emmy for? Um, I work at Indiana Donor Network and we entered the uh, health medical category. Um, it's a um, short documentary on um, Minerva Coker who lost her daughter and she became an organ donor. And uh, as we were saying on the red carpet, such an important story to tell, especially to encourage those to sign up to become organ donors. Um, why do you feel like this was such an important story to tell specifically? Yeah, so um, it touches on the uh, multicultural aspect. It's a black family, and it also touches on gun violence. And so I think it's really important because there's a lot of myths around organ donation. And we kind of try our best um, in this little piece to dispel those myths. Mm -hmm. And um, winning this Emmy, what does this mean for you, personally? Um, really awesome. Um, I won a few uh, student production awards, um, you know, when I was in college. So this is my first uh, Emmy, mm -hmm. and so it's a big, uh, you know, dream of mine and a career moment, so I'm really excited. Perfect. Thank you so much. Congratulations once again. We'll send it back to you guys. We'll be back in just a bit. Welcome back and congratulations, guys. Um, I Can you present yourself very quickly? Yes, uh, I'm Matthew McComb. And I'm Len Brown. All right, and can you tell me for which uh, category you won tonight? Yeah, it's uh, graphic arts and uh, motion graphics, um, compositing visual effects, really long title. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. And then uh, can you tell me a little bit about your project and what it consists of? Like, sure. yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, we worked on the film Engineering Tragedy, the Ashtabula train disaster. And uh, um, there was a period piece, so some of the places didn't exist anymore. So it required we create them in a 3D visual world. <laughs> okay. Oh, interesting. I love this. All right, then congratulations. Thank and you. do you have any plans to celebrate this? Uh, someone to, maybe you would like to dedicate this award to or anything? Sure. Um, in my speech, I dedicated this to my wife and oh. also uh, my two grandparents um, that actually passed while we were making the film. Uh, it was about a, an Ashtabula train disaster, and my grandma was from Ashtabula. She would have loved to seen it made. But well, thank you guys so much for answering my questions, and have a great night. And again, congratulations. Thank you so much. Hey y'all, we are back with some more award winners. Can y'all say your name and what your award category was? Uh, it was in the hard news category. My name is Steve Brown. I work at WXIN uh, Indian, Indian, in Indianapolis. Tim O'Brien with WXIN in Indianapolis. Beautiful. And I heard that, Tim, you were the one who found this story. Can you tell me a little bit about how you found it and how it turned out? Well, it was just kind of some relationships I had built up over time with one of the prosecutors. And it's a it's a story that was kind of a tragic story, but it's some good came out of it. It was basically um, a woman who was abuse, abused by an abusive relationship. She was nearly killed, nearly died. Um, and, you know, we kind of looked into the, you know, why the protective orders had failed her and why. Um, but in the course of that, we discovered that the GPS, um, she was being GPS tracked by her ex, which kind of led to a change, ultimately a change in Indiana law, you know, that Steve really kind of stayed on top of the story and kind of followed the story through the state, from, from our original story through the state house. And, you know, it's really rewarding to see a story that, you know, has made some positive change. Wow, that's incredible. Can you tell me about your part in it, following it along? Yeah, happily. This is really not our story so much as it is Millie Park's story. Uh, Millie Park was a woman who had a really abusive boyfriend who had planted a GPS device in her vehicle after they had broken up. He used the vehicle to track her down and brutally stabbed her, nearly killed her. Because of her courage, after she had recovered, she testified at trial to make sure he was convicted. She testified again uh, at his sentencing to make sure that he got 80 plus years in, in prison. Then she went and testified again before both how, how, an Indiana House and the Indiana Senate Committee to talk about legislation necessary in order to keep this from happening. You know, all sorts of trackers are being used in this way inappropriately around the country. Because of her courage, a bill was later, later entitled Millie's Law, passed through the House and Senate unanimously and was signed into law on May 4th. So, um, 
I know she'd be really happy about this tonight. Yeah, we, I think I could speak for all of us that Millie is the real winner here who made y'all be able to tell that story. Thank y'all so much for your time and for your hard work telling the tough things. We'll be right back with more interviews and more information on the local Emmys. Welcome back, everyone. I'm going to let you introduce yourself. We were talking a little bit beforehand, but I'm going to let you guys introduce yourselves. I'm Kyle Timas, director of Zeros, the fiction long form winner for the student category. And I am Natalie Savage. I am one of the actresses. I played Carrie, AKA Princess, in our fiction long form. And can you tell us a little bit about your film? Yeah, so um, it's called Zeros. It is a superhero comedy. Um, kind of more of a coming of age mm -hmm. film where um, our lead actor um, named Ethan mm -hmm. kind of struggles with uh, growing up and also fighting crime. Nice, that sounds awesome. So what was your superhero's superpower then? I was basically kind of like a Black Widow, Kill Bill kind of like super good, competent girl boss kind of thing, I guess. Nice, and what does this award mean for both of you guys? Uh, it means a lot to me growing up watching superhero movies, um, being a, a big fan of it. That's, you know, watching all like the Marvel movies growing mm -hmm. up is what yep. made me want to be a director. So mm -hmm. to have an award where we've made our own superhero mm -hmm. movie and to win an award for that is very surreal. That's awesome. I love acting. I've acted in things for a while, and that's actually want to, what I want to do with my life. So this is the first time that I've obviously been part of an Emmy award-winning. I know it's just a student film, but an Emmy is an Emmy, and so that's always very, very exciting, and it's the first time I've ever been a part of an experience like that. That is awesome. Congratulations to both of you guys. I hope to see you guys either directing or starring in a Marvel or DC or whatever film is out there on the big screen. Thank you very much. No problem, no problem, and we'll be right back with some more award winners coming up. Hey guys, we're back with more winners from this show. Can you guys tell me your names and what category you just won in? Yeah, my name is Tulani Smith. Bennett Conrad, we won for the commercial category. Commercial? What was your commercial about? Yeah, it was uh, for the zoo. It was for uh, Indianapolis Zoo called Zubu. Um, we ended up doing a, uh, a spot for their uh, Halloween special. Wow, that's really cute. Are y'all big Halloween fans? I like to say so a little bit, yeah, personally. Oh, for sure. I feel like the world has like different kinds of people and there's a different brand of people that are like Halloween people. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. I wouldn't say I'm like a crazy like go hard fan for, for Halloween, but I definitely like to dress up every now and then, you know. And over here we got our very own Halloween costume with the disco shirt. Hopefully we can move the camera to see him looking fresh as always with the theme. We love to see it. Woohoo! Man, are you guys planning to celebrate this award? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. That's incredible. Thank y'all so much for your time. Enjoy the award. Thank you very much. Hello, and we're back. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself, your name, and who, what you won tonight? Uh, hello, uh, my name is Hannah Johnson. I won a writer, sound, and public service. Nice. Congratulations, too. I'm so proud of you. Uh, how old are you, if you don't mind asking? Yeah, I'm 19. So. See, that's, yeah, that proves a lot. And what did you do then? Are you, like, still, like, in college? Like, what do you, what are your plans right now, basically? Yeah. So I'm a freshman in college, or I just finished my freshman year, so I'm a sophomore now. Um, I have my own production company, which I am running right now. Um, and yeah, I plan on finishing out my college education and then go full into making movies and also running my production company. Oh my god, that's great plans and honestly that's a true inspiration for us. So congratulations and thank you for answering my questions yes, and have a great much. night. Yes. Thank you, you too. Everyone, I'm going to let you introduce yourself to all of our guests. Absolutely. Hey, I'm Carlin Wells. I'm a journalist and multimedia journalist specializing in race and culture. And I just won my first Emmy. I'm so excited. Congratulations, your first one. Yes. Perfect. And can you tell us a little bit about what you do and uh, what did you win the Emmy for? Okay, so we worked on so many amazing people. I, I don't have time to name them all. I can't remember everyone who worked on the project, but Street Level um, highlighted communities on the east side of Cleveland. And we talked about 
how some communities are um, invested in and others are not, but they all have a story to tell. Um, and it was really special to me because a lot of the communities on the east side are heavily uh, black. You know, there's minorities who live there and there are people who are overlooked and often don't feel like their voices and stories are being heard and told. So it was an honor for me to work on this story and I'm, I'm just amazed. I'm in awe that we won. That is awesome and that's a fantastic message to tell everyone as mm -hmm. well. So what does winning this Emmy mean for you, but not only for you, but also that community that you made that story for? Yeah, absolutely. For me, it just, it, it means that um, my pa I think about my parents and my grandparents. They were the first activists and advocates that I came across. They advocated for people who looked like me, my grandparents especially, um, and the work that I do is motivated by them. So that's what I think about when I think about what what does this win mean for me? It means the hard work of my grandparents and the, the activism and the teachings and the learnings that um, my parents instilled me with it's, it's paying off, and I'm so glad to pay it forward to other communities, underserved communities, underrepresented folks and minorities and black folks um, with the work that I do. I'm honored. That is fantastic and a great message once again. Congratulations. No problem. Nice talking with you. No problem. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And we'll be right back with some more award winners. Welcome back, everyone. I'm with Chuck Lofton. Chuck, can you tell us a little about, yeah. about uh, how you won the Emmy and uh, yeah. what do you have submitted for? This is the second one tonight for basically the same topic. Mm -hmm. Chuck's Big Adventure is a series that we do at Channel 13 in Indianapolis. And we go basically around the country uh, telling stories of interesting places and uh, fascinating people. And we've been doing this now. This will be the fourth year. Wow. Uh, and Fortunately, we've won Emmys for it every year that we've done it. But uh, our topics range from Fort Lauderdale and the ultra-rich set to climbing up upon Mount Washington with the world's worst weather oh to uh, a story that we won an Emmy Award for earlier tonight, Dog Mountain, which is a, a mountain in Vermont where people bring their dogs. It's dedicated to dogs and to the uh, dream and the legacy of a man named Stephen Hunick. Is, fellow passed away a few years ago who is one of America's great folk artists so it's great to bring those stories to the people in Indiana and then to be recognized is very humbling for it that's amazing so you traveled the entire country the entire to tell these country. stories that's, right. that's awesome what is your favorite story that you've been able to tell I've been asked that a lot yeah. and I think actually one that we won an Emmy for tonight yeah. Dog Mountain yeah. it's a place that you've got to go to if you have a pet it was dedicated uh, by this gentleman to really the people of Vermont, but, but now people from all over the country are going. And there's a chapel there where you write a memory of your dog who passed away. You nail it up there, and that's just one of the many cool things about New England, but we enjoyed that one a lot. That's awesome. I just had a dog pass away a couple months ago, it's so hard, that's it, it is. It is. We actually we just got a miniature Schnauzer. Oh, good. So yeah, she's she's a little ball of energy. <laughs> she's crazy, but well, sometime. If you get a chance to go to Vermont, yeah. bring her with, her, mm -hmm. with you and let her run up that mountain yep. because it's a lot of fun. That sounds, sounds absolutely fantastic. I'm going to have to tell my family when yeah. I get home. I'm going to be like, you know what, guys, I have the perfect vacation spot. It's a great one. Chuck, nice thank meeting you. you. No problem. Thank you, you so much. Hey, tonight. thank you so much. Thank you. We'll be right back. Hey, y'all, we're back with some more winners. Can y'all tell me your name and what category y'all just won? Uh, Brent Valenti. I just won for live sports producer for the uh, Cav Cleveland Cavaliers broadcasts. I'm Lily Valenti. Beautiful. Sports, that's my area, that's my area too. Okay. Can you tell me what exactly you did for the Cavs? So I work for Valley Sports Ohio and I produce all the Cavs broadcasts. So that's basically what your, your boss back there is doing and it's putting together the ideas for the show, working with the talent. Um, and just making sure it goes flawlessly. All the replays, all the content, all the fun stuff that you want. Now, what's that like? I'm sure it's a lot of chaos because you never know really what to expect, huh? Complete chaos. You can have a plan to do one thing, but then the next thing happens. If the game doesn't go that way, then you gotta be ready to cover it either way. So. And the Cavs have had a really fun season. You know, I'm sure it didn't go as far as everybody necessarily wanted to, but can you tell me how 
how it was producing a season like this one. Yeah, look, I've been doing this close to 20 years, and so t good teams, bad teams, it doesn't matter, the same approach every time. So it's be ready to entertain and educate fans on the sport of uh, basketball. Okay, and in your professional Cavs opinion, do you think the Cavs need to make any moves to get back in the to get to the finals next year? Uh, yes, but I probably shouldn't say them out in on TV right now. <laughs> no, I think they will. I think uh, Kobe and all those guys are really, really doing a good job right now. They will make adjustments, and people will continue to have uh, fun Cavalier uh, teams. Outstanding! Thank you so much, Thank and congratulations. Please have a good rest of your night. Let's say how fun it is. Welcome back. We are here on the red carpet with some more winner winner chicken dinners. Can y'all tell me your names and what category you just took home? Chicken Parmesan dinner, Josh Krupp. Uh, we just took down, took home a weekend newscast from Toledo, Ohio. Yeah, Ryan Dick, uh, the producer for the weekend newscast. Wow. So what do you think made your newscast so unique that it is taken home an Emmy? Yeah, unique. Uh, it was it was an all around solid production from uh, the young team that we have putting together something that wasn't just your normal, here's what happened. It was, here's what happened. Here's a creative way to show it. And this guy was a big reason uh, why that was able to happen. We had uh, other people who were involved who weren't named on the Emmy too, who were uh, contributing. Sam Widmer, Chris Mercadante, uh, who helped a lot as well with this. Our news director, Michael Baldwin at the time. Uh, so there were a lot of people that put their effort into this to make it more than just about one story or a couple of things. It was a solid all around around newscast. And can you tell me about the production elements of it with that creativity? How'd you come up with stuff like that that was super cool? Yeah, really just over my time being there, we've kind of, these are things that we've already experienced before, starting with a soundbite of the police scanner of this crazy moment of when shots are fired outside a football game at a high school. I mean, it's a very nerve wracking experience for the entire community, but on top of that, we were able to tell them and be transparent with not only what we did know, but what we didn't, what we were still trying to get answers from from police. Because often I feel when we don't have the answers, we don't admit that. And so that was one of our focuses we wanted to drive through was make it simple and honest with what we do and didn't know. And like he said, our team, I mean, I at the time was a senior in college when I was doing this and our technical media producer was also just starting college at that same time. So really a really young team. Josh did a great job of helping us make sure we could do a really good job with what we did. That's outstanding. Yeah, I had a friend of mine that her little brother was at the Whitmer football oh, really? game. Yeah, it was very, very scary, but I'm so grateful for coverage like y'all. Congratulations. Thank and you I hope so much. you have a wonderful rest thank of you, your you. night. I promise you we will. <laughs> we'll be right back with more. Welcome back everyone. And for the third time tonight, could you please introduce yourself to everyone? Yes, Jonathan Walsh, News 5 investigator with Channel 5 News in Cleveland. And I know this story was very important for you. Could you uh, talk a little about the story that you covered and what you won the Emmy for? Yeah, so we won for continuing coverage. Um, it was called Breaking Their Silence. Um, several women stepped forward initially saying that they had been abused, severely abused, at a former orphanage called Parmadale. And because they were so brave, and persistent. This was the first time they were speaking publicly about this. They inspired dozens of others to step forward. And we, because of our reporting, um, basically forced the hand of the Sisters of Charity to start a victim's assistance fund. Numerous victims are now being compensated. Uh, some are still in the fight, because it's never easy, but it all happened because they stepped forward. Yeah. If that ever happened to me, I'm, I'm not brave enough to talk about that, mm -hmm. but they, mm -hmm. they saw the need and the importance of stepping forward. And for that, I am eternally grateful for them trusting us with their story. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're gonna stay on top of it because it's not over. Yeah. The courage of those victims must be absolutely just outstanding. Yeah. It's, it's one thing to go tell a friend or maybe jump on a Facebook mm -hmm. um, support page, but to go on television mm -hmm. and be basically international, because we put mm -hmm. it on our website, put it on our app, I mean, that's another level. Mm -hmm. And for them to repeat this story and go through this all over again, mm -hmm. um, it was amazing. And, and I just felt honored mm -hmm. that they trusted us with that story. And uh, I'm so glad they did step forward.
Well, we want to thank you for sharing that oh, story. Yeah, that is absolutely. a fantastic message and a fantastic story to tell to get the word out thank you. for these victims. Thank you. you guys are doing a great job. I appreciate the platform. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah. Thank you. And we'll be right back. Hello. We are back with a twofer. I've already seen this guy before. Can you please reintroduce yourself to the people that haven't seen you before? Yeah, my name is Tulani Smith, and then I work for Borshoff. Beautiful. And we were just talking about how the musical element plays into any great piece. Can you tell me why you think the music played so, such a big part in your piece? Definitely. I mean, like this that year, uh, last year for the zoo, we were trying to create a video uh, kind of centered around a sea shanty kind of element, you know, with the zoo boo and the sea shanty kind of like being a big thing of the during that year. We wanted to kind of create something that kind of like played into that um, that kind of trend. And so we definitely were able to create something in that realm, kind of channeling um, Pies of the Caribbean in a way. So it's kind of fun. That's really fun, especially with the Halloween element, like costumey type thing. What was your inspiration for making it? Yeah, um, I'll say it was definitely uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, I was working with uh, another one of my coworkers, Aaron uh, Scamahorn, and then um, he was kind of like sitting over with me and we were trying to figure out different ideas and just mentioning, kind of like looking at different inspirations, I found that Pirates was definitely one of the ideas that came to mind. It wasn't necessarily sea shanty, like, you know, uh, exactly, but sea shanty, sea shanty ah, say that 10 times fast, adjacent. And so it was definitely uh, something that we were able to kind of channel and kind of use in order to create something special. That's incredible. Congratulations. And much. what's it called? The Zubu? Yeah, Zubu, uh, the Ballad of Zubu, essentially. The Ballad of Zubu on your local Spotify. We'll be right back. Thank you so much. Hello, welcome back. And we've got a two for another one. This time, what's this one? What's this award for? This is a uh, weather coverage award. Never thought I'd be here for that. No kidding. So you were telling me a little bit, weather's not usually like your type of thing. Why, do, why did you get involved with this kind of weather report? There was a, a storm, a, a tornado in Eden Township. And I was, funny story, I was, I was working that night. My story was done. I was with my photographer, Steve Durning, and we were laying low, relaxing when they said, hey, there's a tornado you guys need to go cover it so we went and covered it um and when severe weather hits you you tend to every story we do is when you meet people and you you kind of get the true feeling of who they are but especially in severe weather where their homes may have been destroyed their yards may have been destroyed uh, so you get an opportunity to meet people on one of their darkest days and you try to bring a little bit of light to, you know, what's otherwise a dark day. Yeah, no, I totally get that from my hometown in Houston with Hurricane mm -hmm. Harvey's big type of thing. Now, can you tell me why you think this weather report in itself was so impactful? What made it different? I think it showed the reality of what can happen. Um, you know, so often we hear about a storm or a tornado coming through and we, we know, I think all of us understand that has an impact on people, but to see the impact on individuals, to hear somebody say, my car was destroyed, to hear somebody say, my roof was destroyed. I think that's, that's the big thing. And so to bring this story to a personal level, that, that's what it's all about. Um, you know, there's there's so many people that have gone through traumatic events, but to tell their story is uh, it's uh, there's an impact. There's a huge impact. Beautiful. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Congratulations. Dear. We'll be right back with more coverage. Welcome back, everyone. I am here with another winner. Can you introduce yourself for everyone? Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Emily Poe. I'm a director, a morning director at WTHR. And then you won the award for directing, right? Absolutely. Yep. So um, I just went off uh, on stage and I won the director newscast category. That is awesome. So 
Do you like being behind the camera? Have you ever been in front of the camera? Let me ask. Um, I used to do a lot of in front camera when I was like in high school a little bit in college, um, but I fell in love with directing uh, when I went to college. So I did Newslink at Ball State University um, and I just fell in love with directing and everything behind the scenes, editing, shooting. Um, so I mean, I don't mind being on camera, but um, my real passion is behind the camera doing all the technical stuff. And we were just talking beforehand about how I was starting to go into producing and more of the behind the camera stuff as well at Kent State. But what advice do you have for us student journalists and students that want to get into that field, maybe becoming a future director or future producer? Yeah. Um, my advice is one, just do what you want to do, right? So you want to do producing, you want to try a little bit of editing, uh, photo, just anything. Really dip your toes and just, you know, do anything that you want to and just get the experience from just a little bit of everything from behind the scenes and in front because you never know what you'll like more. That's true. Thank you so much for the advice. Congratulations again and we'll be right back. Welcome back everyone. I'm here with some winners. I'm going to let you guys introduce yourselves. Uh, my name is Luke. I'm with WPTA in Fort Wayne. Uh, I'm Tyler Brumman. I'm a multimedia journalist and anchor with WPTA in Fort Wayne. Perfect. And what did you guys win the Emmy for? We won for evening newscasts and medium markets. Perfect. And uh, what does this Emmy mean for both of you guys? You want to start? Yeah, sure. Uh, I think for us, you know, it, it's just the culmination of a bunch of hard work. You know, we had two big stories uh, lead this newscast. You know, we had uh, the release of the body camera video of Fort Wayne Mayor Tom Henry, who was arrested on a drunk driving charge. Our goal of that was just to make sure uh, and to kind of try to get an idea on whether or not, you know, he violated his power and to be able to give viewers the chance to see that for themselves. And then the other one was about the fight over New Allen County Jail. A big decision was made that particular day. Um, basically, our judge, uh, a federal judge in our county, basically said, hey, there are inhumane conditions at the jail. It's overcrowded. Something needs to be done. So we have continued to dig deeper into that. Um, and now there is a new jail that will be built. Wow. So you guys were able to make a difference and by telling that story. That's fantastic. And uh, what does the Emmy mean for you? Yeah, I think it, it was really cool for me because um, this was my first Emmy, but it's also uh, the last time that I'll probably be representing the station because I uh, uh, have taken a job in a different industry. So this was kind of like a big last hurrah. And when they called my name on the stage, like, oh, wow, I actually get to do this before I ride off into the sunset. So that was really cool. And I, I really got to shout out our investigative reporter, Angelica Pickens, because um, basically the city kept on refusing to give us that video. Right. And it was like the reasons for that were really flimsy and we realized that if we don't like push for this, mm -hmm. we're not gonna be able to get like any like accountability in the future. Mm -hmm. So she pushed, she pushed, she pushed. And it was because of her that basically the city's gonna have to totally reconsider the way that they interpret public records yeah. laws. So yeah. that was a huge deal with this story. That is fantastic by her and by you guys. That's awesome. And your final hoorah, riding into the sunset, as you said. That is a perfect way to end it on. And congratulations on your new um, position. And hopefully uh, we'll see you guys both soon. Well, you might be in the, you might not be here, but uh, hopefully we'll see you guys again. Congratulations. Yeah, exactly. There you go. You'll be here in spirit. Indeed. There you go. Perfect. And we will be right back with some more winners. Hello, 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 and we are with a very fun crew. Can y'all tell me your names and what award y'all just won? I'm gonna start over here. My name is Mark Mullins. I'm at WRTV, the ABC affiliate in Indianapolis, and our crew just won Best Evening Newscast. Outstanding, let's meet the rest of the cast. Yeah, I'm Caitlin Kendall. I'm a reporter for the station. I'm Rachel Wilkerson. I'm an investigative reporter for the station. And I'm Nikki Dementry, and I used to be a reporter um, at the station, and I'm really proud to uh, have worked with this team and see them continue to soar. Um, Honored to be here. Man, and I mean, you guys' energy coming up here. Do y'all think you, this positive energy is what makes y'all's newscast so good? You know what? Everyone always jokes about relationships outside of work, but honestly, our team is so great and they mesh so well. And this category is a really big one because there's a lot of competitors in this market and to be able to say that you won evening newscasts, that's a really big deal. I agree. I mean, and we really are family. Yeah. We really support each other when we can, when one needs to lift up the other's help. And I really think that that carries through our newsroom, which helps us be successful. We all trust each other, so you know we're listening to Mark, but we can't see him, but he's in our ear. So it's all about trust, communication, and yes, positivity. It all goes with our energy. We just all, you know, vibe together. So yes. 
I was going to let you ask the next question because I don't want to take away all of your answers, but I'll answer first the next time. Okay, outstanding. What has been your favorite part about this newscast? Oh, well, this, you know, this was an insane day. We knew it was a day that was coming, but to prepare for it and for it to actually happen is totally something different. It's a, it's a story that has been in our market and, and national news, international news, for years. And this was a huge next milestone and I think it goes back to what everybody has said right now it goes back to teamwork you have that preparation but once everything hits the fan you're like okay let's go 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 they're in a car together I'm in studio Mark's on a desk we're all running together and that's what makes it great um, sometimes we say we're the worst communicators in this business but we definitely communicated the best that day yes the room was packed I mean there was media everywhere like she said we had national outlets there this was a day that our colleagues have been working so hard for for years this wasn't something that just happened overnight rafael sanchez kara kenny caitlin nikki our producer rick harker mark everyone collaborated on this and um, we were just ready when the day came and of course we'll keep the girls and their families in our prayers Catch me up. What happened? So it was an arrest in a very big case, the Delphi murders investigation. Two young girls, teenagers, a 13 and 14 year old were killed um, the day after Valentine's Day and found. This happened almost seven years ago, six years ago, when they finally made an arrest in the case. So the city and even the community, even the nation has been watching this case to try to find somebody responsible for this. So this newscast was the day that they officially announced the arrest of Richard Allen, who is currently going through trials and court hearings um, and is currently behind bars for the girls' murder. Wow, that's incredible. And why do y'all think this story was one that impacted so many people? I feel like anytime you have young children and young girls particularly that are involved in a crime and they're killed and you don't really know how they're killed and they just go missing and all of a sudden it turns out that these two girls are dead. I think there's a lot of questions around it, but of course your hearts feel for the families and you want to be able to share these girls' stories whose lives were tragically cut far too soon. So I feel like anytime we can share stories like that and have a voice for the girls, who now don't get to have one, I think it's an opportunity we all kind of seize on. Plus this story really hit uh, across the nation because it showed that this can happen anywhere. In any kind of small town, it made parents hug their children tighter, it made parents watch their kids even more closely because it really hit the, one of the smallest towns in the heartland of our nation. And so it really impacted not only people there, but across the country. Absolutely. Thank you all so much and congratulations. We'll be back with a lot more coverage coming up. Hello everyone, and I'm joined here by Steve. Could you introduce yourself a little bit and Steve. tell us? Uh... Yeah, I'm Steve Weinstein, the Vice President and General Manager of WEWS in Cleveland. Perfect. And uh, what did you win the Emmy for? For overall excellence. Awesome. That's perfect. So what does that Emmy mean to you personally? It doesn't really mean a lot to me personally. It actually means more to my team. I mean, we work really hard every day to do great journalism in the area. Um, you know, awards are a great recognition, but it just shows how hard the team works every single day. That is true. Dream teamwork does make the dream work, Absolutely as they does. do say. I believe you. Yes, it does. Perfect. Awesome. Steve, nice meeting you. Right. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And we are going to have some special thank yous before we wrap up this wonderful show. First up, we would like to thank Kent State and the Student Media and Journalism Department. Without them, we wouldn't have been here. We wouldn't have been here without them. And we would also like to thank Classic Teleproductions in Twinsburg. They gave us this whole live truck, all this equipment. They have been an incredible help, and we would like to thank them so much. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Bacon, and everyone at Classic. And lastly, we all want to thank the Sam. man, the myth, the legend, our Sam, Sam Angelo. He has been our professor. Yeah, and he's just been a fantastic mentor to all of us yes. throughout this whole time. He's been Supporting organizing us. the entire backstage with us, and he's just been fantastic. Sam, we want to thank you. We know yes, you're sitting in that you. live truck yes. right now. Hopefully we he's smiling. <laughs> Hopefully. I know he is. He better be. <laughs> all righty, guys. Well, all right. I think that I think was the Emmys. Right that was the Emmys. Right that was the Emmys, yes. huh? Yes, all right. Yeah, I think we're done. Can we do a mic drop? I don't know. Uh, 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 Ready? Um.